Hello, David Snowpack here from Snowpack Games, and this is my third and final devlog, as well as postmortem, about the first person shoveler game that I made for the Godot Wild Jam number 45. So, the first thing you'll notice is there is some music, this wonderful music from Jamphibius. Here is the actual level theme. It's got a nice retro style, it's got a brisk pace, which is good for, I think, um, a game with a time limit. There's also some new environment art added by Logan number two. You can see these vines up here. Uh, I don't remember if the skull was there <laughs> in the last video or not. Um, but there is also some vines down here. These serpent statues in here. And one of my favorites is the um, airplane that you can get to. A crashed airplane on top of that cave there. Here, I'll jump up some trees to uh, give you guys a closer look. <laughs> oh, if I didn't mention this in the last um, devlog, the grunts in the game, <laughs> that's actually my voice. <laughs> I couldn't find a grunting noise that I liked. Um, all the ones that I found uh, were these uh, painful grunts, like you're just getting punched in the face. And I just wanted like an exertion, like a uh, like this. <laughs> anyway, we have this downed airplane crashed up here. Um, as you may have noticed already, uh, the treasures got fixed up by Logan number one. We now have the treasure, uh, the final art from Logan number two and the treasure animating in. Um, let's do some basic math here. Uh, <laughs> and then it animates open with some nice sound effects. Um, the placement algorithm was broken, I believe, uh, at the last devlog, and he got that uh, finished and did all of the final placements for all of the treasures. The way it basically works is there are 17, I think, spawn areas throughout the level, and when the game starts, it will pick, uh, I don't know how many, but not all 17, a certain number of them, and then place uh, treasures in each. Uh, also, Logan number one, he finished up all these menus. Uh, there was the uh, settings menu. We have, you know, the volume sliders, full screen, and credits, as well as just a million details, the million details that always come with UI stuff. Uh, for my part, I streamed development of the game last week. Um, we worked on adding that button in the temple that you have already seen because I happened to go through the temple earlier. Um, and I just really like the uh, sound effects for this. Here, let's let's go listen to them for a second. So there's the sound effect of stepping on the button and then the sound effect of the gate actually opening. Isn't that fantastic? I didn't make those sound effects. Those I found on uh, Open Game Art, the um, sources listed in the credits. We also worked on stream on a whole bunch of issues in the character movement um, that had appeared after switching to the real environment art in the prototype uh, version of the game where everything was, you know, boxes and everything's at 90 degree uh, angles. Uh, the character movement worked perfectly. And then once we came into this environment where there were, you know, uneven surfaces, there were a whole bunch of problems. Uh, there was one where you would slide when you weren't moving, and that's something I just really didn't want in this game. I know it makes sense in some games. Um, Oh, coyote time, which is really important for like all these tree jumps, which just wasn't working after, uh, you know, the surfaces weren't completely flat. And there was an issue with being able to walk up nearly vertical surfaces. <laughs> you could just pick any wall that wasn't 90 degrees and manage to walk up it. So we worked on that on stream. We got it most of the way done. After stream, I got it the rest of the way done. There is still a remaining problem where uh, you can land just right that you stay in the falling state. Here we go, I just did it. So I'm in the falling state, but I'm not falling. And the reason is I'm walking just like all energy towards this wall so that my walking into the wall is stronger than gravity is pulling me down. If I let go of the forward button, I will eventually fall. I did not manage to fix that. It's, I may come back to the game and work on that because I really want to have a good solution to that uh, for, you know, if I do another 3D platforming game. Anyway, it, uh, most, the most egregious problems were fixed, although Vicfro did a stream of a bunch of games from the Godot Wild Jam number 45, including ours, and used that uh, stuck in the falling state bug to climb out of the stage and fall <laughs> out of the earth. Uh, but I think it's definitely good enough for a jam game. And then after that, I worked on uh, things to try and teach the player how to play the game. And uh, there were a couple of things that I was worried about. 
Uh, I was worried that players wouldn't know what these treasure rocks looked like. They wouldn't know what they're looking to go dig up. Uh, I worried that they wouldn't know to click and hold. They would just click once and be like, hey, hey, why am I not digging up this treasure? They wouldn't know that they need to keep holding the button for, you know, the 1.7 seconds or whatever it is to get the treasure. And I was worried they wouldn't know that jumping on trees was a possible thing. Um, because that's a little unnatural. You don't think I can jump on the top of a tree, right? So I wanted to teach these things as naturally as possible with as little text as possible, uh, contrary to a lot of my other games uh, where the tutorial tends to be just a wall of text, sometimes multiple pages of text. Um, and I wanted to avoid that this time. So we added a tutorial, which actually, uh, if you play the game for the first time, there won't be a tutorial button here. Uh, there'll just be a play button. And when you press play, it'll take you to the tutorial. And then once you finish the tutorial, it'll take you into the final game. Whereas now, if I press the tutorial and finish it, it'll take me back to the menu. So we get this one line of text for the tutorial. This is the only text in it. Click and hold on the rocks to dig up the treasure. And we're placed in this special tutorial room where there is literally nothing else we can do but dig up these rocks. So the idea is this will teach the player um, that these are what the rocks look like and tell them that you have to click and hold. You see up in the upper left, there was that bar going. That was another thing uh, that we added to try and get that idea across. That was actually Logan number one's idea, but it's a brilliant idea. So if you just press the, the dig button, you'll, you'll get that bar for a second and be like, oh, wait, wait, I, I really want to fill up that bar. There's a tendency to want to fill bars up, right? So anyway, you come here, you dig up this one treasure, you get a quiz. So then I guess people know they're going to be doing these math quizzes, which has been a surprise to a number of people. <laughs> And then the gate opens and you leave through here. And first time through, like I said, that would start the game. And to teach about the trees, um, that trees were jumpable, uh, all of the trees are either for show or are there for like difficult platforming, right? That was all the original trees. And I was like, well, how about we just add one easy tree <laughs> and tempt players to jump on it? I've actually jumped on it a number of times since we've started this video, but this tree here serves no purpose other than it's easy to jump on. So that is hopefully teaching players that trees are jumpable since, you know, some of these areas are not reachable without jumping on trees. So now to the post-mortem. Um, this was a wonderful project. I think collaboration on our team was fantastic. Um, that's always a tricky thing. Uh, me and my teammates uh, had never worked together before. We uh, each knew pretty well at least one other person. <laughs> I knew uh, Logan number one from uh, other game dev meetups and uh, the Logans knew each other just as, as friends. But you know, you never know what it's like to collaborate with someone until you do it. But it, it went really, really well, at least from my perspective. Maybe I was terrible to work with, <laughs> but they were they were wonderful to work with. Um, for me, this was a relatively chill and, you know, just not stressful jam. I just kind of took it easy. I mean, I, you know, did put a lot of time into it in the tens of hours, right, on, on this project total. Um, but I didn't do what I've done at some game jams, which is uh, just completely work myself uh, crazy. I do know that Logan number two, who did the environment art, he did kind of work himself crazy. Um, <laughs> he uh, did a lot of really late nights uh, doing environment art. And uh, I think, you know, he did a wonderful job. And uh, I hope that he still had a really, really good time despite, you know, working so hard. But I'm, I'm very grateful for him doing that. And this was, I think, his first game jam ever. So, I mean, this is a, a wonderful job that he did for, for a first game jam. And this art is just fabulous. I love it. Um, overall, I just had so much fun, uh, in particular animating the shovel. Like I just loved working on the shovel animations. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about animating in 3D, primarily from, you know, doing those shovel animations. Uh, I learned more about the Godot physics engine in 3D, which of course I've, I've used, but, um, doing a platformer, you know, got me a little bit deeper in some of the details than I had previous be previously been. Um, I used GPU particles for the first time. Um, up until now, I've only ever used CPU particles, uh, mostly because I get stuck in GLES 2 a lot uh, from doing VR for the Quest or um, focusing on HTML5 releases. So that was cool learning that. I kind of regret doing it a little bit because I also learned that there is this um, hitch that happens the first time you spawn particles uh, to compile the particle shader. 
and uh, it was really, really noticeable in HTML5. I put in kind of a solution. When you first launch into the level, all of the particles that happen in the game are spawned underneath you, below the stage where you can't see it, to try and blend that particle shader compiling with just loading of the first level. Anyway, it was great. Oh, and uh, me and the Logans and Jamphibius have decided to open source the game. Um, I will put the link in the description below. All of the code will be available under the MIT license and all of the original art. Not all of the art in here was totally original. For example, the shovel uh, is an uh, asset that um, I downloaded. But all of the art assets that are original, including the music, will be licensed under the CC by NDNC license. So if anyone wants to check out the game, uh, want to know how we did anything in it, that will be available to you. So thanks for watching, uh, subscribe on YouTube, join the Discord, head over to snowpetgames.com for the link to the Discord, as well as more information about me and my work. I'll be putting a link to play the game in the description below, as well as a link to the source code. Thanks everyone again for watching. Bye-bye.